thank you all so much for joining us. Um, I'm Alana Harrington. I'm the director of the Sela Foundation. And this is a talk about connecting the dots in the OER space. About one use case in which our organization, the Sela Foundation, has set out to locate and actuate OER in an online learning environment. I'd first like to begin by framing our efforts within the broader educational landscape. I think we can all agree that education is moving toward a more distributed model. We're seeing more and more online learning outfits, distance learning programs, and hybrid models, all supplemented by studies that indicate uh, the problems inherent in one-size-fits-all schooling approaches. And OER, this fast, distributed galaxy of content within which uh, the majority of us are operating, is both a mechanism and manifestation of this shift. However, as we marvel over this increasingly distributed learning network that is emerging, uh, we at Sailor are constantly reminding ourselves of the importance of convergence, of the importance of context. We can't expect students to master concepts when the information is so disaggregated and so, we in the OER community, uh, as many have brought up in the past, find ourselves in this difficult place. You know, we're torn between the desire to be completely free and open and the need for more structure and standardization. Somewhere along this continuum of tension, uh, we need to find models that embrace and to some degree balance these two opposing forces. We need to find models that manage to both wander the galaxy while also identifying and designing constellations, pathways, and patterns. Sailor is one approach to that dynamic, an open yet structured way for students to navigate the OER network. So when we first entered the open ed space in 2008, we spent some time surveying the scene. Uh, I've said it before and I'll say it again, we were bowled over by the efforts of so many at this conference and uh, you know, so many in this room. However, in order to really focus our efforts, we needed to define a problem statement and set to work solving it. While the OER ecosystem is expansive and thriving, first, content is disaggregated, even hidden or buried. We've been aggregating and organizing content for about two years now, and we continue to find new projects uh, on a weekly or even daily basis. Second, content is redundant. Uh, we're seeing a lot of providers recreating the wheel, whether informed by a not-made-here frame of mind or perhaps just the general difficulty of discovering content and making it interoperable. While this redundancy occurs on one hand, other fields of study are left completely devoid of useful content. Third, content is difficult to assess in terms of quality. There really aren't any validating metrics or tools at the public's disposal. And fourth, content is decontextualized. There are no end-to-end -end solutions that really tell students what they ought to focus on in order to learn what is generally taught at a traditional higher ed institution. Now we realize this is not vital to every student, but for those who seek a more structured learning experience, there are no standards in place. And so we began to ask ourselves, how can self-directed learners with very specific educational goals navigate this network on their own? How are they to know what to use and when to use it if they wish to pursue a particular field of study. And so our obsession with organization and structure was born. We knew we needed to make use of the existing body of content. Uh, we needed to vet that content, contextualize it, string it together to form something whole, uh, something continuous, something that could lead a student from point A to Z over the entirety of a course or even a major. Our solution was to tap into the academic community and really empower forward-thinking educational practitioners. We called upon them to use their expertise 
of the higher ed system, on their courses, their discipline, their interaction with students, and their pedagogical training in order to help us shape course curricula and uh, to use the existing content and to really add to and scaffold that body of content. I'm fairly certain though that you don't want to hear about this process from me because I've never taught a course at the college level and I have not constructed a sailor course of my own. So we have a short video to show you. You'll get a deeper look at our process and you'll also hear from some of our consultants who actually did construct some of our courses. Michael Saylor created the Saylor Foundation because he had a very simple, very earnest, and very bold idea. Education should be free. Rapid changes in technology are making the distribution of information faster, easier, and cheaper. Increasingly, the distribution of and access to education can be universal. We've reached an inflection point where it's now cheaper to learn to read on a tablet or computer than it is to learn to read on paper. More people can access mobile networks in the world that can get access to running water. And so net network access is greater. And as that happens, right, you've got this, this profound, disruptive, egalitarian, utilitarian tornado that's blowing through everything. If I can actually uh, provide 12 million books for free to someone with an iPad, then that means I can provide 12 million books for, to someone for free in the middle of the jungle of Burma. If I can automate education or, or, or project it, then maybe people that don't live in the first world can get just as educated as people that do. The question is no longer, does the need exist? The question is content. The question is form. The question is distribution. Countless providers of open content, from the humble teacher to the most venerable institutions, are opening the doors. Sailors harnessing technology to deliver free education around the world, pushing the open education movement forward and creating greater access to these resources. I believe that open education is important because not everybody has access to the traditional higher education system, whether that's because of financial um, reasons or whether that's simply because of location. Uh, and so to have this access to kind of an open educational resource like Sailor, provides uh, really new opportunities for students who might otherwise have been excluded from kind of a higher educational system. So I think having the ability to log on from anywhere in the world with an internet connection and look at resources that are vetted by experts, that are assembled by experts, and that are, are trustworthy uh, is really just an ideal way for these students to gain that level of education that they might otherwise be excluded from. Access to the internet is outpacing access to higher education in the United States and abroad but would-be students shouldn't have to drink from the fire hose of free information. We've called upon college educators, discipline experts, to help us discover, vet, and organize the very best of what's around. Our contribution is, in a word, design, the transformative marriage of form and content. We unite superb learning materials with well-wrought courses. The product is a portal to substantive, scaffolded, asynchronous education for a few hours, a few years, or a lifetime. Let's take a closer look at how Sailor is curating, developing, and distributing free education. On our homepage, we list our areas of study, including a general education program and 12 complete academic majors, art history, biology, business administration, chemistry, computer science, economics, <coughs> English literature, history, mathematics, mechanical engineering, political science, and psychology. As an example of how our full courses of study are laid out for the students to work through, let's consider the history major. Selecting the link for history brings up a description with detailed instructions on how to proceed, followed by a roster of courses designed to capture the range offered in a typical college catalog. The history major within, within the Sailor curriculum is similar in some ways, but also differs in some ways from your typical university or college curriculum. And it, where it's similar, of course, is that each course replicates roughly a 15-week uh, semester course that you would have at a college or university. The materials are very similar, readings as well as sort of analytical materials, and that allows the student to achieve that same level of understanding that they would in a, a typical college or university classroom. And we also, in, in the course structure itself, we offer all the same basic courses that you would, uh, you would have to take in a history major at a college or university, a basic world history curriculum, um, U.S. history, or Latin American history, or even history. 
Um, where we differ to is that we offer a diverse uh, range of courses that might not typically be taught uh, at a university. It's certainly not every semester we offer some courses that we were, were really excited to put together that, that would be courses that a professor might teach perhaps once in four years. And so the way we structured it is that we have these unique courses that are always on and they're always available to anyone um, who has access to the website. I think offering, offering these um, diverse courses really gives a student a much broader and deeper knowledge of history. Once a course outline is created, our professor consultants search for and vet open education materials from various content creators in the higher ed landscape, matching content and form to build a dynamic learning environment for students. For example, in History 104, Historical Methodology, the Art and Craft of the Historian, our professor consultant, Dr. Benjamin Schwantes, has incorporated a wonderful openly licensed lecture from MIT, a seminar in historical methods by Professor Ann McGinnis. While this lecture has tremendous worth on its own, we believe value is added by placing it in a larger structured learning context, among other materials. Similarly, in History 201, the history of Europe from 1000 to 1800, our professor consultant has decided to include an openly licensed Yale lecture, The Enlightenment and the Public Sphere, by Professor John Merriman. Again, a great lecture, but now it is connected to a larger learning landscape that students can access in one place, sailor.org. To see how all these fantastic OER materials are connected and incorporated into the sailor structure, let's examine the course, say, History 212. Clicking on its link brings up a page with a short introduction. Just below that, the student will find the course overview, everything he or she needs to read, watch, listen to, click on, and learn. While we're here, it's important to note that each course is designed to provide a student with the same level of information contained in a traditional college classroom setting. We've listed time advisories for each unit to let students know how long it should take them to work through the materials. We also list learning outcomes to highlight specific lessons students can take away by successfully completing a course. The time advisories and learning outcomes are designed to help students navigate the asynchronous learning environment. Furthermore, our materials are placed in sequence. Clicking the first resource uncovers a link to the material and some brief instructions. When finished, the student can move on to the next resource, working at his or her preferred pace. As in all our courses, the consultants first look to open education materials for resources to incorporate into the learning experience. For example, Professor Schwantes has included a reading assignment from a public domain American history book published online by the U.S. State Department. Our professor consultants work hard to find high-quality open educational resources from a variety of providers. When they don't find something that meets our needs or standards, we find high-quality copyrighted material available freely on the Internet. Then our permissions team reaches out to copyright holders to simply ask for the rights to host or relicense those resources, such as this presentation on the history of slave trade routes. We now host over 1,000 high-quality educational resources from this process. While we first look to existing OER materials and are pleased with the positive response to our permissions initiative, we also have examples of open education content created specifically for sailor.org by our professor consultant. In History 212, Americans and Civil War to the Present, uh, I developed a, a series of lectures that complement <coughs> the reading materials from each unit uh, of the course. And I use um, the resources such as recording tools, um, Microsoft Paint, uh, a drawing pad to create <coughs> these online uh, Blackboard lectures that would help engage the students, showing them images, uh, writing key terms or perhaps key descriptions uh, on the board, and I say board, I mean literally the screen of the computer, uh, as I would go along and present perhaps a 15 or 20 minute lecture. And these lectures are tools that are, as I said, complement the readings for each unit and give that student uh, a broader, uh, more engaging experience of having a professor sort of help analyze or help explain kind of the highlights of, of the materials. And so in most cases, the student might want to listen to the lecture first and sort of gain a better understanding of the highlights and then engage in the readings, or I'm sure some students could approach it just the opposite, <coughs> do the readings, and then listen to the lecture in order to sort of confirm uh, or explain to the materials that perhaps they didn't quite understand uh, in the readings themselves. 
In addition to these types of lectures, which are distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution, or CC BY, license, in a number of our courses, our professor consultants have created original OER materials, such as readings, assignments, and assessments, to help the students measure progress along the way. For example, in History 101, Ancient Civilizations of the World, our professor, Dr. Konchi Sans Cambra, created a reading titled, Aryan Society and Religion, to supplement existing OER materials, and made the reading available under a CC BY license. An example of sailor created course assignments can be found in History 102, Early Globalizations. For this course, our professor consultant, Dr. Dean Costin Terrace, has created reading questions for most of the course units, along with answer guides to allow students to check their work. These materials are also made available to the larger educational community via a CC BY license. Each course culminates with a final exam administered through the open source learning management system Moodle where the student can obtain a certificate of successful completion. We believe that our courseware is truly high quality, but how can we be so sure? It's all very well to ask a highly qualified professor consultant to build a course and select its resources, but we're taking an extra step and have committed to engaging additional professor consultants in peer reviewing all of our courses to ensure that we're doing the very best we can. But when we are peer reviewing our course, the first thing we look for is accuracy. We want to make sure that when we send a student to a website, we want to make sure that everything on that website is right. Because the internet is a black world that when you put something on it, it never goes away. So if you're going to do it, the setup foundation always wants to make sure that it's done right. So having experienced designing courses, not only at Sailor, but also at a traditional accredited institution. The best part of that is that it's not only just on you, but eventually your courses at Sailor get peer reviewed, which is something I never had the opportunity to have at a traditional accredited institution. So at Sailor, now you have people that do teach at other universities and institutions looking at what you're doing and commenting and giving you feedback. So in some ways, it's almost even a, a better process now that we've explained how we develop our courses and looked at some ways students can utilize the resources on sailor.org, we'd like to share a little about some new projects, student e-portfolios, and the media library. We're developing an e-portfolio system to help students track their progress. With this tool, students can declare a major, enroll in courses, view their transcript, and access their earned badges. They'll also connect with other learners around the world, sharing resources, asking and answering questions, and building networks. While portfolios will allow students to stay on top of their course progress and grades, our forthcoming media library will organize every resource from our courseware into a fully searchable, robust database, open to the whole world. The future is bright for open education, which we think translates to a bright future for hungry learners. The question is, how far can we go? OER can go uh, really as far as people, people's imaginations. I think education is absolutely a right. Um, I, I think that everyone can learn, everyone does learn, um, to whatever extent they're capable. And I think the more and more you make it um, accessible to people, the more they'll learn and the better lives they'll have. We agree the sky is the limit. We look forward to working with the OER community to help further connect the dots and pave the way for students to obtain quality education at zero cost. So, in closing, and I really can't emphasize this last point enough, um, you know, we heard Jim Shelton's call this morning uh, for a shift in value proposition from just free to better. And we're absolutely on board with that. Um, however, our priority is to get version one of the content out there first. Um, that is our first priority, then we can iterate on that content, others can iterate on it, but we want to get it out in its most basic form first, um, so that students around the world who don't have access to these educational materials will have something to use right now. Um, I'd like to invite Jen Shoup, our content development manager, and Jeff Davidson, our strategic initiatives manager, and 
Pammy Rodan, our public relations coordinator. Up. If we have a couple minute for a couple questions, if you guys are curious about anything. So, is it an accredited institution? Yes or no. So people go, they take a course, just personal enrichment. Yes, just as uh, students would go to MIT and maybe click on astrophysics. Um, look at the materials in that course. We've instead laid it out in the format of a semester long course. So if someone is looking for that experience, they have access to it. But that's Do you have a, just a sense of how many students or would be students and self learners are using this? Uh, can you mention recently one live just to get a sense of? Sure. Well, I guess we didn't go live until what, March? Mm -hmm. um, you know, unfortunately, our site is set up such that there is no login requirement. Our trustee wanted it to be as open as possible. Do you remember what I our just real quick, too, we haven't promoted it yet. Yeah, we haven't <laughs> promoted still it. Building. This is the first time we've the ever spoken about yeah. this. The percentage, you, the percentage you saw on that, or in the video where some of the courses are still being built. And just to address your point, too, in addition to what Alana said, <clears throat> we envision also a, in the near future, if not now, and, and very soon, where certain segments of uh, students will be able to take a portfolio of work and take that to an employer. It may not work in every field, but it, had, <laughs> but it will work in some. And it's already has worked in some. Computer hackers don't have degrees at all, right? And they're out there working. So maybe someone can take our web development class and our small business management class and start a business. Uh, or go to another small business and, and use that as, you know, show their e-portfolio, show their badges, and take that knowledge and as well as a portfolio of creative work and pass it on so they can, you know, then maybe once they have that job, they can afford the accreditation <laughs> school somewhere else. I'm, I'm sorry, I meant to say we um, have completed 200 courses. That's about 80% of our original 241 slated for development. And we're still, I mean, we are still learning and refining our process as we go. And so if you guys have any recommendations, we'd love to hear them. Yes? Yeah, we're, um, we're building this uh, the OER University. Yes. And uh, it's got, do we have 10? Ten universities and colleges in five continents now, and our idea is to take the type of work students do there, give them a test, and we'll give them credit. And we're, we're prepared yeah. to do that. It's great. Well, we exchange cards while I got partnership. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was, um, Wayne McIntosh is also. Yes. Right. Yeah. Question. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer Lee Jones. This is our faculty at accredited institutions traditional institutions uh, using these materials in, in lieu of uh, traditional textbooks and all, or is that foreseen uh, in foundation? I mean, we definitely hope so. At this point, we're still sort of data on that? We don't have data yet, but we can say that a lot of our professors who are developing our courses, and I think we have 200 professors we're working with, um, a lot of them say that they end up using materials they found through this course design process in their own classrooms, which I think is a really interesting sort of subculture we've created. Mm -hmm. the Are these all designed in the self-study format? Yes. Uh, uh, yes. So I totally understand getting the content out there for version 1.0. What does version 2.0 look like? Well, I don't know. I mean, something, yeah, for example, I'd say the Carnegie Mellon OLI courses uh, with their beautiful intelligent tutoring systems. They gather data as the student progresses through the course. Something more advanced like that maybe. Um, the textbooks develop on the digital <coughs> platform where videos are embedded and students can work with each other literally on the page of the textbook. Um, yeah, I definitely think assessment is our next uh, big yeah. like, focus. Uh, Dean? Yeah, I was just... Uh, adding to that for a moment. Um, there is Barbara Gielski's Collaborative Statistics book that we so often talk about in open source is on Sailor. So as you start to think about the next version of Web 2.0, I think the, the issue simply is how can we make more of your content that format? Mm -hmm. But then the hard work would be how do we get that? And I'm glad to hear OER University because in our community colleges, for example, our staff courses are completely impacted. No one can get a staff course. So when you look at a sailor, and you're using the same book that 17 other universities are using in California, it kind of makes sense that you would get credit 
if you could test out of that by going through the Sailor course and not impact the system itself. So I think the next level for at least my viewpoint in working with Sailor is to try to get to a point where we can provide some of the content in a more enriched environment for faculty members to do exactly what OER University is doing, even beyond badges, and starting to get more uh, certificates and credit for it. But I do think badges are going to be really huge for the rest of the 95% of those who don't go into higher education, because they're going to really, really need some skill, and they're going to really need to go to employers and say, I've actually mastered X, Y, and Z, and I think your site is probably, I know my kid can pass Khan's Academy, but we need an adult academy, if you will, to go through like a sailor to kind of give those same, same kind of skill sets. So I think it's going in a great direction. Thank you so much, and we would love to answer your questions offline. I'm getting the signal that we're five over, so shame on us. So sorry. Um, but please ask us for questions whenever you see us. Thank you.